right? Yes, sir. So that you just have to run. So x plus y value has been given 5, and so does the value of x minus y too. So 5 multiplied by 5. All right. So we'll run it. So x plus y and this is not defined. We'll just run this because we are not going to define that. All right. It's clear. Or in the other sense, if you want to go with the simply module, you can make it there too. All right. All right. Next, we have so we have almost covered everything from the assignments. Hmm. And let me look on type checking has been done right. Okay, now let's say if this is an number forty five. Okay, and this to be done in complex. How you'll make it? Mm hmm. I'll make it complex, simple, type checking, just have to convert things. And somewhere also you have been given to, you know, like compare up with some uh, assignments and all basic operators. Right. So let's look on, have a look out there. Now, what if you want to take inputs in Python, the very important thing. All right. So input functions. So in Python, input functions like you have to define a variable. Variable we have understood in the last class, right? How it is going to be variable? What are variables, right? Having some of the memory locations just are used for storing of your memories. Okay. So let's say that we want to take an input of someone's name. So we'll be writing a name is equals to. Now let's say take the input and then let's have the name enter name. That's it. Inside a parenthesis in the strings you will be writing in this and you'll run this. Let's say my name I'm writing. Right. You want to print. So it's work only is to take the inputs and that's it. It is done. All right, and we'll print this name. So there it goes, and that is also a string by default, always. So input function will always take the inputs inside the string, str format, or you can say the um, type is str. Okay. Now there comes in the last class. Remember, we have done till you know th three important your data types of the numeric data type, right? That was integer that was float that was complex right so after that there is something called as random all right uh, let's go with the random so random is also a package which is nothing but going to give you some variables sorry some values between some of the ranges okay now it goes let's say import random and like if you want to print some values right or between some ranges now the thing is that how ranges are going to work so once we import random, we need to understand that what all are the functions which are inside the random. So we'll be going to print the directory of random. So it will give some of the values like it, it starts with, uh, I think something like, where is A? Yeah, let's start with 
beta variate okay from here the functions and till here okay so we'll be looking on that how it works first of all now when we talk about ranges well, let's understand what a range in the ranges let's say that you want to print numbers from 1 to 10 okay you want to print the numbers from 1 to 10 so how you will print it so you have an option that you can write 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then 10 oh, sorry hmm. you can hit like this right you have an option so what if this is like 1 to 100 you have to apply something as a range to get it printed so there what you can do you can apply simply a loop for i in you know like range of let's say even for 20 25 print i print a list of i print object is not yeah obviously so let's go with i so you have got this right from 0 to 24 now you see the thing you printed 25 numbers it went on printing from 0 to 24 now understand the fact that range is something which is going to range is this function where you will be writing your starting and stopping limits okay so starting limits will be from 0 or starting limits by default will be from 0 right so you can define it from negative or from 0 wherever you want so let's say like from 0 I'm defining and I want till 5 all right so numbers what I'm going to get it will be from 0 1 2 3 and 4 see 0 to 5 okay so if I print this list of range of 0 to 5 this is 0 to 4 numbers 0 1 2 3 4 clear now let's say this list I take negative 5 to 5 right but what happened here the last thing or the stopping limit you can say whatever I am writing as 5 right what we are getting a less or a predecessor of that particular number right one less of that understood so like 5 it was still 5 then it is going to be 10, till 4 so what I have to do is if I want minus 5 to 5 I'll be having it for minus 5 plus 5 plus 1 basic things right so minus 5 till 6 you are going to get till there okay now in this range there is something which is called as intervals okay how intervals works see if I say that I want to have all the numbers from 0 till 20 and I only want the even numbers so even numbers will be in the intervals of 2 so you have to write something like this that from 0 to 20 you want the even numbers in from the intervals of 2 now if you want from 1 because it will be always giving you by default from 0 so if you want it from 1 you have to specify 1 over here okay but otherwise you'll be getting everything from the 0 that's okay right that's not a problem so we'll run this you'll get range of 0 to 20 with the intervals of 2 that is your uh, by default thing that how it goes let me write a comment here that is range of a start to a stop from the uh, intervals or you can say it has to be oh let me write it as intervals or these stepping values like this okay now if you print it it would be a list of range of 0 to 20 with intervals of 2 so it goes like 0 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 and 18 right so till 20 if you want again what I said plus 2 right because even numbers are there so I'll be taking it plus 2 odd numbers plus 1 and so does like it goes
Okay. Just a minute. Yeah. Then. All right. Now let's say that if I want to print now this random numbers. Just a minute. So this random numbers are very much helpful for obtaining pens, for obtaining OTPs, for obtaining several particular things which require basically the uh, randomness of any some digits, right? Which requires some, uh, you know, like something picking up from a crowd, something like that, okay? Picking a lot of numbers from, picking a single numbers from a crowd kind of thing, okay? So it goes like that. So uh, let's say um, if we want to print a four digit code, how we will print it. Now you have seen ranges how it works, right? So in this range, using this range function with this random module, we'll be using rand range, we'll be using random, we'll be using rand int, we'll be using sample, we'll be using shuffle. All right, a lot of functions are there. Let's see. So let's say if we are using the RAND range, so what it does, so let's see the documentation. So RAND range goes with start, stop, stepping, intervals, okay, method of random instance and this fixes the problem of RAND int which includes the endpoint, which is usually not what you want, okay. Endpoint means like uh, what I said in ranges whenever you see a word range Endpoint is this Okay, if I'm writing that from 0 to 20 I Want numbers in the interval of 2 or if I'm writing from 0 to 5 I want numbers uh, From uh, 0 to 5 right so from 0 to 4 you are getting right so this is your endpoint here 4 This is the endpoint right now what if I change the endpoint instead of writing range of 0 to 5 if I write random dot rand int of 0 to 5 then my endpoint will be changed okay endpoint will be changed that means that your numbers will be getting from 0 to 5 itself because there is no such range over there then that there is a module of random and you are just printing the things okay we will see it later okay so that is your endpoint endpoint means when you write endpoint equals to true here the features are not being given in numpy in the guys learn data science there they go with this okay so endpoint when it is true that means uh, till whatever the stopping limit you have given let me write like this yeah so till whatever the stopping limit is being given to the uh, you know code yeah. whatever the code is being given so let me make it as a comment first yeah the stopping limit will be positive or it will be exactly if it is false then stopping minus one would be there is this clear okay let's have a look so let's say i want to print or i want to see a random dot rand range okay so now i will be giving a range of numbers see only random dot rand has been added okay range is fine better range you have just seen above so let's say from 0 to 5 okay even if you write 5 only 5 it will take things from 0 to 5 
there should be some starting limit, right? So starting limit is always zero by default. So when you write five, it means that your last limit is five. So you'll get obviously numbers from zero to four because it's a range. Okay. So let's write zero to five, something like this. Okay. Let's run it. So you got three. Now three has been picked up as a random one. Okay. Three has been picked up as a random one. Now, so basically if I use rand range of negative five to six, negative five to five, I'll again not get a negative number. Oh, sorry. Most probably a negative number will be there. Okay. Just a minute, thanks. Hmm. Okay. So like that, if I want to make now, so these are one single words, uh, sorry, single numbers, so getting a single little quotes, right? What if we want to four digit code, five digit code, how we'll make it? Very simple. Random. Random. That's right. So see, a code is there. Now this can be similar several times. This can be changed several times. Okay. This is how you are going to get it. Everyone is clear with this, whatever we have done till now. Yeah. Quickly speak out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And guys, you know, uh, like uh, I'm facing some problems with my WhatsApp. Okay. So I'm not using it. You can uh, share things on Signal. Right. Probably I think it would be taking 10 to 12 days for me to recover on the WhatsApp. So uh, you can text me on the signal, right? Okay. Number is there, same also. All right. So till here, everything is fine. Hmm. And uh, also in the group, if anyone is having any doubts, right? So tell him or her also to share those things in the signal, right? Okay. Now let's say these are with the numbers. What if, uh, now you might have also seen, right guys, that uh, when you went on any, when you go on any of the websites, okay, and uh, when you, you know, create some IDs, right, you get a random password, right? Uh, it can be in, in the, you know, upper cases, lower cases, combinations of numbers, special characters, right? Those are there. Those are done using the random. Okay. So let's see how. Let's say basically what all that password consists. First of all, we have to go through that. Okay. So what all password consist? Special letters. No, sorry. Special characters, lower letters, upper letters and numbers. That's it only. Right. So let's say lower numbers. I'll take it A, B, C, D. I J K L like this. Okay, I'll be using upper letters. That will be the lower dot upper. Okay, then the numbers that would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's only these numbers are there, right? Okay, then these some special characters. Now this would be having like let's say uh, exclamation mark oh, sorry exclamation mark at the rate uh, hashtag mm, modulus maybe sometimes and percent 
So I guess only this, this much, right? Probably uh, most of the times you get this. Star also sometimes, okay, all right. So these all are the materials what are there in your passwords, random generated passwords. Am I correct? Very well. That upper is nothing but the capital letters of this small thing, whatever we have written, right? So let's say the password what here gets generated is equals to lower plus upper plus number plus SPC. Now I'll print password. So this is the complete package you can say from where your passwords will be generated. Right? Small letters, capital letters, numbers, special characters. Okay. And what you see this is inside a string. So we discussed in the last class, right? Anything, whatever you will be looking on in the single quotes or double quotes will going to be as a string. Okay. So now the uh, term is that if we want to create a five digit password, A random five digit password is being required to you know get it. How will we be making it now? The first thing. So what we'll do is there also you require an empty string. Okay, that will be something like this. An empty string. Okay. Simple. Or you can say your this is going to be a password, something like that. but not defining any variables, just keep it like this, empty string. And inside this empty string, you want to join your alphabets from here or your you know terms from here, selecting your terms from here. That would be a random one. So you're using join method and that comes inside a string. So this is a particular function of a string. That means in the string, in a blank string, you have to join something. Now what I have to join is, I have to join a random dot sample, okay? So I'm joining a function here which is random dot sample and then what random dot sample from where to take the samples? Sample is to be taken from the pass. How many samples? We want five samples and we'll run this. Now we're getting a code. Is this clear? Everyone? Doubts in any area? All right. Let's say if I run this again. Run this again. Sir, whoa. Sir. I'm going to join. Just a join a command. Here. Yeah, that is a command of a string. str. Okay. Okay. Dot join is a string command. So you are joining. What you are joining, particularly inside the parenthesis, look on. You are joining random dot sample class of five. Like if I only use random dot sample. From pass of three, so that generates a list of different different, you can say characters. Okay, if I say that I want for ten characters, so it creates a list of ten characters. Now what we want is we want to join all these ten characters inside a string. So this is how it will look like. See. Okay. Okay, this is how it is being generated. Everyone is clear with this? Yes. Anush, Manchika, Akash, Jyoti, Kritavya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, uh, let's talk about arithmetic operators. Now, arithmetic operators are something where you will be doing some basic arithmetic calculations. Okay, that require 
uh, additions, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, normal things. Okay. And let's look on. So let's say close bonus addition. Now we have two variables x and y. And we are having values as 5 and 4. So we are just writing x plus y. We are getting the output. So subtraction x minus y, y minus x. Okay. Multiplication. We will get a good factor here now. So, what are we getting here? Values in float. So, division, normal division is going to give you float value. If you want integer division, or oh, that is also called as flow division. What to do there? X. Something like this. What's the change here? 1.25 has been changed to 1. 0 0.8 has been changed to 0. That means once you are converting an integer division, that means, <coughs> sorry, only the integer part will be there. The rest everything will be removed. Okay. Yeah. So, it is still multiplication. Let's say exponentiations. That will be x to the power of y. What is the x and y? We have taken 4 and 5 something. Oops. Okay. Let's have it. So x to the power of y or y to the power of x. Okay. Like that. And then you can go with the remainders or modulus. Whatever you call it. x modulus of y, y modulus of x. 1 and 4. Like when x is divided by y, what is the remainder it is leaving? Right. Like 100 when divides by y, uh, 3, what is the remainder it leaves? It's 3. Sorry, 1. Right. So this is like modulus, exponentiations, integer divisions, divisions, multiplications, subtractions, additions. Clear to you, everyone, how it goes? Yes, sir. These are the arithmetic operators, and this is how we're going to use it. Okay, now once we have done the random one, there is one such question we'll be converting it. That is, you might have seen Google codes, Facebook code coming in your mobile applications, right? Everyone must have seen it. Yes or no? So now, can you generate the Google codes easily? Yes, guys. Can you generate it? Codes you can generate, right? Now you can generate your own codes quickly, yes? Yes or no? Yes. What happened to everyone? Uh, any doubts just there? You can ask. See what I'm talking is we can create G codes, yes or no? Well, I'll show you now. It's easy, nothing, guys. This is nothing less. You have to use a string and you have to use your uh, random. That's it. And just a simple line code. 
print g punch plus converting things in the string requires str as you know like for integers int float for flo at complex is complex for string is str so here i will be using random dot random of one two three four five six string as like from six to six numbers okay plus str of Is this something like what you receive in your applications, in your device? This is your one-time Google verification code. Very simple. What you did? You added three strings. One string, second string, and the third string. However, this is a string, but still I am writing str. You don't require to write this here. It's not very really necessary, but still I have written it. So don't be confused over there. It will perform the same thing. Okay. Here it was necessary to write str because this is not a string. This this will generate you a number that will be an integer. So we need to convert everything there inside a string. So we have just written inside this str function. So what you are doing, you are just adding up three different strings to get or you are joining three different strings to get a value. This is the value. When you run it again, you get a different code. You can run it again, you get different codes clear to everyone yes sir yes akash kritagya jyotika clear yes sir yes sir hmm. okay. so this can be created a lot at a time okay how let's see for an example i'm just giving you that how you can create all these okay. so let's say that there is a blank list okay for codes, just uh, see how it is being done. Okay, don't think for now how to make this. For now, just look on that how it is looking. So let's say this is code list, and I am going to apply. So I need two of the modules for now, first of all. Okay, I need. NumPy and pandas for now. So code will be a blank list. And what I'll doing is for i in numpy dot in array sorry arrange. Uh, now here I'm using a numpy array. Okay, so numpy array I'm going to use. So I've written numpy dot a and then it is range C okay so it is arrays range all right so you only just see it how it's working so now if I arrange of let's say I want some 10,000 I want 10,000 codes okay so for I in numpy dot arrays of 10,000 what I'll do is generations of the code that will be numpy dot random dot branded so let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 9 8 7 6 5 4 this is hmm. okay then this gen dot append code dot append dot gen now what is this third line sorry fifth line means that uh, here first i'm applying a loop first of all that means i will be uh, you know making numbers for 10000 times okay 10000 codes i'll be making in such a way okay now these codes then will be added to this blank list using the method of append okay so once this codes are being generated what you have to add is what do you have to add is this random of this with this to your gen okay so you have added this right down so that is the complete thing what you have only to do 
now once you, uh, your things are being done your the codes will be converted to an array because this is for now it is in list blank list or oh, sorry it will be filled with some of the uh, 10,000 codes what we'll be doing is we'll be converting this in the so this code will be converted in the numpy array and that will be named as g codes okay and once it is being uh, renamed what we'll do is we'll be reshaping it and it'll look like how it is things are going so i'll make thousand rows and 10 columns and your data i'll be making a data frame of g codes which will be equals to pandas dot data frame where my data is going to be grouped. however the last two lines will be a bit confusing don't go with that okay just try to understand that we are creating 10,000 codes and we are applying a range from 1 2 3 4 5 6 to 9 8 7 6 5 4 so over this period of range numbers are going to be selected from here and it will be uh, added in the variable of gen okay now that gen will be appended inside this blank code and that code will be changed in the numpy array and it will be reshaped okay reshaping is something like which comes in the, uh, you know, numpy okay so it will be reshaped as thousand rows over 10 columns and this uh, will be stored inside the variable of g codes and then g codes will be converted into a data frame object that comes in the pandas module and that is how it is going to run so run, let's run it uh, let's see how much time it takes importing packages and then running okay done okay now uh, let's have a look on this code g code now remember the sample function if uh, again i want to get some info of my code so it says that there are nine rows sorry nine columns okay so 10 columns starting from 0 to 9 okay you can rename your columns whatever you want okay so total 10 columns are there entries thousand entries and all okay now let's go back so gf codes D, uh, df of g code let's print it and here do we see this okay all these are g codes so something we have missed yeah i'm just noticing We missed this one. Done. Okay, Mr. G over here, right? So here you can see that there are ten, uh, sorry, one thousand rows cross ten columns, and you have generated this. Now this can be, you know, guys, we can this can be saved in Excel format in your devices. So we'll have a look on this in HTML format, any format. Let's say DF of this G code to underscore of csv csv is a format in excel right comma separated values we will say this are the g codes you can say sample generated g codes dot csv we'll run this and then come back to your directory where you are here in the directory and look that here the sample generated g codes which is of 104 kb you want to download this and click on download will be saved inside your pc okay. oops we're having low battery just a minute how much it is so 10 percent fine it's a fine Uh, sir, is this meeting recorded? Mm -hmm. Yeah, every meeting okay, is being recorded. Okay, I skipped some part in between that time. No worries, meeting are always recorded here. Okay, that will be shared to you. All right, so this is how you are going to generate codes. Okay, you don't have to focus on these two last lines. Okay, because 
just I made to make you understand that how these things are going to work. Okay. Now sometimes like when you create arrays, when you create some things, you know, for respectively, you have only three choices. You want to give a percentage to something. So this is how it is going to work over there. All right. So I guess it is clear to everyone. Any doubts in the assignment questions? If not, then we'll be moving ahead. Let's see. Now let's have a look on to the comparison operators. That is also important. Comparison operators, the next one, where you basically go to compare the things. Now, before going to comparison operators, let me discuss the things with you in a strings, how it goes. Now, strings are the characters which are written inside double quotes or single quotes as we discussed. This, there comes the two different factors in these strings that is called as replication and concatenation. Yeah, Akash, we'll be getting the recording after the lecture. Like around 7 p.m., 8 p.m., it will be uploaded. Hmm? The playlist link you guys are having, right? In your classroom, everything will be shared, okay? The WhatsApp I'm not using for now. So you can share as he texted me on the signal. You, can, you guys can text me on signals, okay? Any doubts, they will be discussed or else the classroom is there, you can write it there, okay. okay. So strings have two different things, that is replication and concatenation, or oh, this is a spelling error, this should be n here. So how replication works? Replication means if in a string, if this is a word, you are, uh, you know, you are trying to uh, do some mathematical operations with the string, you want to add 5 with this error, right? Why? Because two different data types are there. That one is a numeric type, other is a string type, and we just cannot concatenate. It should be a same data type. That's why where here we are using this is an integer. We are converting this in the string first, and then we are adding it. Now this is only possible when you are multiplying. So multiplying word for five times means printing the same word for five times. And here I have used the gap, so you can get the gaps for here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and again a gap, okay? So this is called replication, repetitions of things. And when it is concatenation, let's say that x is equals to a word, and y, okay. And in the x itself, if, if you want to add something, you will say x plus is equals to, let's say, game. So your x particularly will be a word game, right? So what x plus this means, if I write it here, x plus is equals to, x plus means x equals to x plus whatever you write. So screen is not visible. Oops, sorry, sorry. Uh, from where you haven't seen actually it was there in uh, it's a comparison operation a comparison we didn't discuss I, I started with the strings here replication and concatenation okay so like uh, what I said is this replication here however this is this was recorded don't worry okay so replication is this is what you are doing when you when you add this this will raise you an error that is type error obviously okay so when you are multiplying it, you'll be getting it, the repetitions of the five things using the spaces, what I have done here, like spaces, okay? And that's what I was uh, saying for the concatenation. So this was replication in the 67th one, 65 is your concatenation, which says that uh, X is equals to word, X plus equals to game, which means X is going to have word game. Okay, that means plus equals is nothing but plus whatever you are adding, okay? Then when you want to find the length of something, you'll be using a length function. 
let's say length of word or any length of g codes we generated g codes right so what is the length of g codes how many g codes are there let's say g codes is not defined very nice let me have a look over there okay 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 right so code are there the length of code is 10000 hmm? okay right this is how it goes now so let's come to the comparison operators understand the comparison operators particularly thing is to compare two values and break down the things in a boolean value at the true or false one of zero so if i again have numbers I write three greater than five so first one goes with greater than false smaller than three less than five equals checking three equal equals to five whether three is equals to five or not that is obviously not not equals three not equals five greater than equals to so two conditions would be here both will be checked and even uh, like only if one condition will be correct we'll be getting the true like this so all things are clear all the five six operators i guess this is how it goes okay so boolean only give you true or false values that is how it is going to be okay now then today's assignment, uh, try to solve the questions, okay? And whatever the questions we haven't discussed, don't go with that, those things, okay? We don't require all those things, so don't go with that, okay? Maybe uh, calendar and a date would be there, so don't go with those things, okay? But still, let's have a look on the calendar module. If, if you want to print a calendar of a month, what you need to do is you have to import calendar module now let's say a month calendar you require so you will take an input of a month which month five that means may okay current month is second current year working is 2021 if i want to print the calendar of february month of 2021 i will just easily write print me from the calendar module i want to print a calendar of a month where my year is 2021 and this is my month and this is how you will get it if you want any other calendar to be printed let's say of uh, next year february right we'll print calendar of a month of next year february so this will be the next year calendar. Now the same thing if you want to print a calendar of a complete year. Calendar of complete calendar. Okay. Of let's say this year. This year complete calendar is there. Next year, next year. Whatever you write. Okay. This is how it is going to work. Right. And for the date and time when you go through, you have to import it again. Date time. For now, let's say current date and time you want from the system. You can say from date time. Date time dot now. And you can print this current 
solo count what's the current time so it says this is the current time that means 2021 is the year second feb uh, second month 15th is the date 16 hours 58 minutes 43 seconds and 7640 milliseconds so that is how whenever you want from the current you want what is the current hour going what is the current minute going so this is the answer you're going to get minute i guess it is okay and what is the current second 43 again i'll run this and it is this okay so if i print this now that is inside a string so if i print this current now you'll get a complete time that is 20 21 16 59 24 and let me run it again 1654 59 16 okay yeah okay this is how it goes right completed let me stop your recording